The Miracle of Foaling An Introduction Horses have a unique and fascinating reproductive process. Understanding this process is crucial for horse owners, breeders, and enthusiasts alike. It allows us to better care for our animals. We can provide them with the best possible environment for successful breeding and foaling. Reproduction is fundamental to the survival of any species. In horses, it involves a complex interplay of anatomy, hormones, and behaviors. By understanding these factors, we can ensure the well-being of both the mare and her foal. Breeding horses is a big responsibility. By gaining a deeper understanding of their reproductive cycle, we become more responsible and compassionate caretakers. Let's delve into the world of equine reproduction. We will explore the wonders of this natural process, from the initial stages of courtship to the joyous arrival of a newborn foal. Stallion and Mare a look at equine reproduction anatomy. The reproductive system of horses is a marvel of nature. It is designed to facilitate the creation of new life. The stallion's reproductive system primarily consists of the testes, which produce sperm. The epididymis stores sperm. The vas deferens transports it to the urethra, which carries both urine and semen. The accessory sex glands, including the prostate and seminal vesicles, contribute fluids to the semen. The mare's reproductive system includes the ovaries, which produce eggs and hormones. The fallopian tubes, also known as oviducts, are where fertilization takes place. The uterus is where the fertilized egg implants and the foal develops. The cervix acts as a gateway between the uterus and the vagina. Understanding these anatomical structures is crucial for comprehending the various stages of the equine reproductive cycle. The mare's cycle, understanding estrus. The mare's estrus cycle, also known as her heat cycle, is a fascinating biological process that governs her reproductive readiness. This cycle, typically lasting around 21 days, is characterized by hormonal fluctuations that influence her behavior and physiology. The estrus cycle can be broadly divided into two main phases, estrus and diestrus. Estrus, commonly referred to as heat, is the period when the mare is receptive to mating. During this time, which lasts for about five to seven days, she exhibits specific behaviors. These behaviors signal her fertility to the stallion. Deestrus, on the other hand, is the period when the mare is not receptive to mating. This phase lasts for the remaining 14 to 16 days of the cycle. During diestrus, the mare's body prepares for the possibility of pregnancy. If fertilization does not occur, the cycle begins anew. Hormones play a crucial role in regulating the mare's estrus cycle. Follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, stimulates the growth of follicles in the ovaries. Luteinizing hormone or LH triggers ovulation, the release of an egg from a mature follicle. Section 4. The Dance of Courtship, Horse Mating Rituals The mating rituals of horses are a captivating spectacle. They showcase the raw power and primal instincts of these magnificent animals. When a stallion senses a mare in estrus, his behavior undergoes a dramatic transformation. He becomes highly attentive to her, exhibiting a range of courtship behaviors designed to entice her. These behaviors can include vocalizations such as whinnying and nickering, as well as physical displays like prancing, snorting, and flagging his tail. The mare, if receptive, responds to the stallion's advances with her own set of signals. She may exhibit winking of the vulva, frequent urination, and a lowered tail carriage. This intricate exchange of signals ensures that both parties are ready for mating. In a herd environment, the dominant stallion will typically mate with the mares. The actual act of mating is relatively brief but physically demanding. The stallion mounts the mare from behind guided by instinct and the mare's signals. Section 5. From Conception to Birth, Fertilization and Foal Development The miracle of life begins with a single cell. In horses' fertilization, the union of sperm and egg, marks the beginning of a journey that culminates in the birth of a foal approximately 11 months later. Following mating, the stallion's sperm travels through the mare's reproductive tract, navigating a series of obstacles to reach the egg. Only the strongest and most resilient sperm will survive this arduous journey, ultimately reaching the fallopian tubes where fertilization takes place. Once a single sperm successfully penetrates the egg's outer layer, a protective barrier forms, preventing other sperm from entering. This fertilized egg, now known as a zygote, begins a process of rapid cell division as it travels down the fallopian tube towards the uterus. Over the next few days the zygote develops into a blastocyst, a hollow ball of cells. The blastocyst implants itself into the uterine wall, marking the beginning of pregnancy. 
Section 6. Preparing for the new arrival, gestation and foaling. The gestation period in horses, roughly 340 days, is a time of immense transformation for the mare. As her body nourishes and protects the developing foal within her womb, she undergoes significant physiological and behavioral changes. Understanding these changes is crucial for providing optimal care for the expectant mother and ensuring a safe and successful delivery. Throughout pregnancy, the mare's nutritional needs increase to support the growth of the foal. A balanced diet rich in essential nutrients including protein, vitamins and minerals is essential for both the mare's health and the foal's development. Regular veterinary checkups including ultrasound examinations can help monitor the foal's growth and detect any potential problems. As the due date approaches, the mare's udder begins to enlarge and she may start producing milk. Her abdomen becomes increasingly distended, and her behavior may change. She may become more restless or irritable, seeking a quiet and secluded place to give birth. Foaling, the process of giving birth, is a natural but physically demanding event. The mare usually lies down during labor, and the foal is born encased in a translucent amniotic sac. Section 7. Responsible Breeding Challenges and Ethics Breeding horses is a rewarding but challenging endeavor, requiring not only a deep understanding of equine reproduction, but also a strong commitment to ethical practices. Responsible breeders prioritize the well-being of both the mare and the foal, ensuring that they receive the best possible care throughout the breeding, pregnancy, and foaling process. One of the most significant challenges in horse breeding is infertility. Factors such as age, nutrition, stress, and underlying health conditions can all impact a mare's ability to conceive and carry a foal to term. Veterinary intervention including artificial insemination and embryo transfer can sometimes overcome these challenges, but they also raise ethical considerations. Another ethical concern is the overbreeding of horses. The popularity of certain breeds or bloodlines can lead to irresponsible breeding practices that prioritize profit over the welfare of the animals. Responsible breeders carefully select breeding pairs based on temperament, conformation, and genetic compatibility. They strive to produce healthy and sound foals that will thrive in their intended disciplines or as companions. Ethical horse breeding goes beyond simply producing foals.